Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we today we're going to look at Proverbs two, um, probably one verse one to verse ten, it complete. But we're just going to read one to four to start with. And interestingly, if you look at the Proverbs, as in if you go back and look, read chapter one. Chapter one's got a warning section in it, and it's quite severe. But what the great thing of it is, it's talking about at the end judgment when Christ comes back. Now, I know this is not, a, you know, people don't want to talk about it particularly, but it's very important to understand this because he gives the warning out that there'll be a time when God will not listen and you will cry out and he will not hear you and he will just go away, leave you to it and you'll have nowhere to go. Now, this is severe, but he's talking about the end time. And the reason why it is, is it's to warn us as so-called Christians that we need to talk to God and we need to pray to him and we need to know him and know him more and more. And that's our walk, a continued walk with him to know him more and more. So when we've done the chapter one, we then, because it ends with, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So it ends with an assurance that those that listen to God and run after him, they will not have fear, anxiety and worries and be worried where they're going. So then we come to chapter two. And that my, my Bible says the reward of heeding wisdom. So now it's saying if Mine you... says the Lord gives wisdom. Well, yeah. But so it's basically now saying, look, we, you, you know what happens if you don't listen to God and you do it your way. At the end of time, the judgment, it will be ripped from among you like a thief in the night. It will happen. It will be too late. You will not be able to plead your case and say sorry and whatever. It's all over. <clears throat> and then it talks about, so now, my son, if thou wilt receive. And then he goes on to talking, you see. See how he's talking to his son in this book. It's obviously to God's sons and daughters, to his people. But it's done in it like Paul talks about um, the beloved. This is a beautiful way of talking. My son, listen to me. Listen to me, your father talking to you. So anyway, do you want to read one, and, one to four? My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hit treasures. So in chapter 1, it's rebuking the people that God went out. It actually says that God goes out into all the streets and the corners and the gates, and no one's without excuse. God's word's gone out, his voice has gone out, but they've not listened. So now it's not only have they not listened, this, this chapter's now saying it's not just listening, it's going after that listening. It's, it's, it's a position of work. It's a position of inclining and, and running after and crying. If thou criest after knowledge, meaning discernment, if you lift your voice and lift up thy voice for understanding. So in other words, lift up your voice for understanding. It's like, Lord, help me. I need to know you more. I need to know your ways. I feel in my heart you're talking to me, but I want to know you better, Lord. I want to really understand. I want to sit at your feet. And, you know, so it's talking about this. And then it says, if you seek us as silver and search us for a, as hidden treasure. Now, interestingly, in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, hide my commandments but the translation is treasure if you treasure my commandments so hide means to 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 keep it close to your heart like it matters hide it as in don't let everybody look through it don't let it be just left in the back room or whatever keep it close to your heart hide it away treasure it like like your wedding ring or or you or something that's important to you you'll keep hold of it you won't just disregard it anywhere so it's talking about a real deep sense of yearning and wanting. See, again, it's going opposite to hearing the voice in the street. 
it's now saying you've got to do something with that hearing people that just heard the voice that didn't listen it says didn't listen now we would think oh that's just talking about hearing something but it's not listening means to react to it to listen to the commandments and do them you see so it's a calling for us because this is really important because who don't want to know the wisdom of god this is so amazing chapter and these first four um verses are giving the um the conditions hmm. by which you can obtain yeah, the wisdom yeah. of god yeah yeah like uh, how do i know if i know the lord i'll tell you how you know do you cry after him if you cry after him you will know you will know these answers so let's move to five then now i'm thinking five let's just do five six and seven i think they're similar so then shalt thou understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So, again, after he's qualified, like Andy said, the qualifications of finding and hearing God and knowing him and knowing his wisdom. Wow, I mean... The, well, I'd like to know just the wisdom of a reasonable man, the wisdom of a, an average Joe that's done life quite well. But to know the wisdom of God, this is like, this is, see, wisdom of God's not really talking about, um, well, I mean, it's partially talking about, but having such vast understanding. What it's really saying is to, to, to rest, because it's talking about not having a fear and having a peace and having a... a a comeliness on your heart that makes you yes lord you know i i i don't need to know the ways i don't need to know the answers i don't need to know about these days we're living in these troubled times i don't need to know about all that i just need to trust in you lord it's talking about having a you kind of know where you're going with your father you you go into that place and you trust him and you're holding his hand and so in, in the five, it's saying now you'll understand, the fit, in other words, the reverence of God and find the knowledge. And then what Andy's just read in seven, the layeth up is stores up and the buckler is the shield. Now, remember the shield of faith and that that's in the New Testament. So now he is a shield to them that walk uprightly. And it, it, again, it doesn't mean by works. It means you walk uprightly because you long for God. You run after God. That is your upright walking, running after God. It's irrelevant if you fall down and slip and struggle because you've got your father holding you up. He's your righteousness. He's what makes you walk rightly. So it's sort of saying in the first four verses, it it tells you that in order to get in this wisdom, yeah. you need to... Um, really seek after it mm. but it's not saying it's not like a, a random game of hide and seek no, where no. you're you're searching randomly not really knowing no. because um the lord has in the in the previous things told us how to do the search yeah he's told us what we're looking for yeah, he's yeah. telling us where to look for and then it says in in five then shalt thou understand the fear of the lord so if you do these things, if you follow the instructions for, for searching, mm. um, then you will find these things. And then he will um, lay up sound wisdom for for you and he will be the shield that you that he holds up for yeah. you. Once uh, you're once you're walking uprightly in these statutes. And um, Proverbs but the the what the name of proverbs means just a sentence that stands alone so it doesn't follow on to other sentences that's not saying that four or five um verses in proverbs are completely random and they don't make sense to each other but they do but they stand alone on their own so mm -hmm. you know it's like it's a sentence basically it answers the one thing but one things that they're talking about in proverbs is wisdom mm -hmm. he's talking about wisdom and it's from the fact that it's written from a father in heaven, a God, the God, the God, the great Lord, down to his children. 
And the reason why this is, is because in 1.8, as it goes into the warning, it says, My son, hear the instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So it's coming across as parent love of wisdom. So, you know, like you tell your children the best ways to go or the right things to do. They don't always listen, do they? But you give that instruction and they take it. Well, God's the same. God is given instruction in Proverbs of how we should live and to know him. Now, we, we either take that up or not. And like I said, in the warning in one, there is no excuse. You cannot get to heaven and go, oh, I know I should have done it, but I just was too big. You won't even have a say. God will not listen. And that's that's an important thing. And six is saying, as it stands on its own, it's yeah. saying um, that, that all wisdom, so all understanding, mm. all... Um, Knowledge. All knowledge comes from God. Mm. It, it comes out of yeah. His mouth. The so way to live. Everything. We have we have no way of gaining wisdom Life's or, instructions. or being intelligent mm. in that way without it coming from the Lord. So all knowledge and understanding comes from the Lord. So do you want to read eight, nine, and ten? He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of His saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. So look at that. This is like a dreamy romantic comedy film, like, isn't it? Because listen to the romance. I mean, um, what's his name? Who wrote this book? Solomon. Solomon wrote three books in the Bible that are all together, but they're not in in um, chronological order because this one is the book he's believed to have wrote in his middle life. Um, I can't remember the other two, but the the Song of Songs is wrote when he's young, mm. and the other book, which I'm now looking like a fool because I can't remember it, is writ Ecclesiastes is written when he's an old man. But one thing about Solomon is he was a romantic fool. It got him into a lot of trouble because he had a lot of wives, didn't he? It was five or six or eight hundred or so. No, oh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> he was pretty prolific in that department. But it got him into a lot of trouble. Anyway, but Solomon was very loving and romantic in his written word. Like He's like the Romeo and Juliet well, of the, the Bible. Well, the Song of Songs yeah, is, is, is like a, love a beautiful letter. love yeah. Poem. Yeah, and so here, but he's, remember this, it's not a sexual thing. It's a loving, uh, deep down lover of your soul. And it ends here, when wisdom entereth into thy heart. This is like getting married or something, isn't it? It's like, uh, I put the ring on and now I'm betrothed forever. And See, it's beauty and love Solomon, coming into the heart, Solomon wisdom. tells us all these things about wisdom. He, he gives, imparts all these little gems of knowledge and uh, understanding. Um, because he was the, the king that was granted great wisdom yeah. by God. Because he, when he was asked, that's what he asked what, for. What do, you, what do you want above all else? Just want to know how to wanted, get things right. Basically, he just wanted. He just asked for wisdom. So and, he was super and the blessed. Lord blessed him like that. And he made a lot of mistakes, and so therefore he's wrote great books with God's power in him because he he's admitted his faults. He says that in Ecclesiastes he says it's all vanity, it's all waste, everything's waste except God. And so he'd blown it. He'd he'd got to his life and knew he'd blown it, but he. But he writes it in so we don't. So we seek after God, you see. And that, like I say, this end piece, he keeps the paths, preserves the way of his saints. Then thou shalt understand, then you'll understand righteousness and justice and equity. Is that, is that equity? Yeah. Uh, yea, every good path. It's, this is, Jesus talks about this all the time on walking on the right pathway. Stay on the narrow path. Listen, choose the right gate. Fact, all of them things. You... You you told me to stop at ten, but really eleven well, do completes 11. the do thought 11. on it's it. It's just where I've marked so, it. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Yeah, so we'll get this understanding. I mean, patience, basically. What David taught, we could go on all day. But the, notice something about God's word is it's circular. 
It always goes round and round and round and it always fits together beautifully, particularly in Jesus's case, when Jesus, Jesus's whole, um, whole embodiment and the way he spoke and the way he acts, for he, he said he fulfilled the law and he downright did because when he came, he brought everything into a beautiful picture and, and spoke out in his heart exactly what God had already put down on paper hundreds of years before. Anyway, we'll leave you with that. Yes, because the thing to remember is wisdom comes from no one but God. Amen. And so we can... We can we, yeah, unless don't come we from search, me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> unless we search after him yeah. and his wisdom, any wisdom that we think we've gained is actually nonsense. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we'll see you later. Love you. Bye-bye.